Today is a sad day in the history of my love of old electrical and electronic things. For today, I say goodbye to an appliance that I've known my whole life and which has been in fact in my family for three generations, more than half a century. It's the Eaton Viking portable baseboard heater from 1968. Uh, this heater has developed a fault, which I luckily caught before something bad happened. And uh, as a result of that fault, this heater is turned on for the last time, and it is going to be thrown away. I brought it uh, up here from Mum's house for the first time in a couple of years earlier today, with the intention to use it. Gave it a wipe down, scotch brighted away some rust that was on it. And uh, when I went to turn it on, I saw some blue sparks coming from inside it. And I turned it off and opened it up. And this is what I found. I already got the screws out of it here. Take the knob off. So what happened was... The top row of the element started sagging and it came into contact with the row of the element below it, which caused a partial short. Actually, I'm surprised that the circuit breaker didn't pop, but it must not have pulled more than 15 amps. What happened was, of course, this is all one long element, and when something made of thin metal heats up, it stretches out and so these little hooks are on springs and so when the heater turns on and the element heats up these hooks get pulled inward by spring tension and it keeps the element taut so that it doesn't sag and come into contact actually you can see right there where it uh, came into contact there with the part of the element above it. So these three white hooks are under spring tension and I opened this cover up and what I found was that spring looks fine, that spring looks fine, this spring is super corroded and not springy anymore. It's still sort of springy, but not springy enough. It no longer springs in that direction when the heater turns on. And so that's it. This thing isn't safe to operate anymore. Could I get a spring and shoehorn it in there and make this thing usable again? Probably, but I'm not going to do it. I have found that as the years go on and as I get older, not that I'm very old in the grand scheme, but as I get older, uh, my tolerance, my willingness to risk, to take a risk uh, with performing homebrew repairs on something in the name of keeping it running, uh, my willingness to do that and uh, gets less and less in the criteria under which I will do that gets greater and greater and so this is not something that I'm willing to risk myself or my property by performing a homebrew repair in the name of of uh, getting it working again this thing is 53 years old it's got a uh, quite a bit of rust on it although on the whole it still looks fairly good for its age but uh no, it's it's not worth the risk to me. So uh this thing this thing is garbage. So I'm sad, but I'm also really really glad that I noticed that fault before something bad happened as a result of it. So, that's it. Um I do have another vintage fan heater that I do have to make a video of and hope to do sometime this winter. But uh, it's not as cool as this and in fact in my entire life I have yet to see another heater in the wild 
quite like this one. A portable baseboard heater, fan forced. And it just looks so cool with the wood grain and it's got a grill straight out of a late 60s pickup truck. And uh, this thing is just so cool. And for 53 years it's served with absolutely zero fault. Even when my family unknowingly ran it for probably 30 years with a seized fan. And it wasn't until I finally got a hold of this thing less than a decade ago that I unseized the fan motor and the fan worked again for the first time in decades. But it always worked just fine regardless even without the fan functioning. So it's been a it's been a pretty fantastic heater. Like I said, sad that it's going, but I'm glad that I uh, discovered the fault before anything bad happened. So there you go. Goodbye, Viking heater, and thanks for more than half a century of service.